Elizabeth Plord, PhD, uh, gave us an excellent presentation, of course, on sunscreens um, as, a, as a biohazard. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I know what I'm talking about today is flying in the reverse of everything we've been told for years, for the last 30 years. And I was shocked as I uncovered all this all these studies that have been done, and uh, there's well over 700 in the book that I wrote about this. And I very innocently started this uh, last year when I was in Hawaii. I've been swimming in Hawaiian waters for 40 years, and they were very cold to me. And the headlines in the paper were coral reefs dying due to global warming. And I'm going, no, this is colder than I've ever felt. So um, when I came across the research that shows that in very low concentrations, sunscreens kill coral in 96 hours. I thought I need to create a book just to try to save the coral of the world because I love scuba diving, snorkeling. And then I did not realize as I got into uh, doing research that my background in hormones was absolutely essential because these, so many, the vast majority of the sunscreens act as hormones. So. Uh, the one thing that we're told is to use the sunscreen to reduce the risk of skin cancer. And in reality, this is the statistics of what's been happening to skin cancer since sunscreens were introduced. And you can see that in 1978, the first UVB sunscreen was approved, and yet skin cancers went up. And then in 1988, the FDA approved the UVA sunscreens, and yet skin cancers continued to go up. And then in 1999, the FDA approved the titanium dioxide and zinc oxide nanoparticles, and skin cancers are still continuing to rise. So why is this happening? Uh, the other thing is that also that the basal and squamous cell carcinomas are going up. They're noticing this across the world. They're saying they're increasing at an alarming rate, even 2010, saying it will soon be a major health problem. So the solar radiation that reaches the Earth's atmosphere, the UV that the sunscreens have been designed to screen out is actually only 4% of what's actually reaching our skin. And out of that UV, uh, the UVB that the original sunscreens, that SPF factor, is designed to filter out is only 1, point, or 1 to 5% of that 4%. So we're talking a very small portion of what's reaching us. The UVA is almost the rest of that 4% that's coming through. Now, the visible is 49, but then we've also got the infrared. 47% of what reaches us is infrared. So the UVB that uh, the SPF is designed to stop and to stop the sunburn, the UVB penetrates just the epidermis, and that's why it causes the, sun, the sunburn that we get. The UVA that they forgot about in those early formulations actually penetrate much deeper. They go into the dermis. And uh, this is one reason why we started seeing the increase in skin cancers. The, the UVAs, when they penetrate the skin, they actually cause reactive oxygen species. And those reactive oxygen species, they're even greater than without the use of sunscreen. And the studies show that 20 minutes uh, bathing after using sunscreen, they're protected, but by 60 minutes, there's more ROS being generated. So what's happening with the infrared? The infrared radiation actually penetrates even further. That 47% that's reaching us, it goes down into the hypodermal layer. And we're getting 17%. 50% of it goes into the dermal layer. So they have been proving all through the years, even including from 1978 on, that these infrared can produce skin cancers. And they have not been protecting us from those with the sunscreens whatsoever. Very difficult to protect against you, the IR. So uh, one of the things that they tried to expand on is there's no chemical perf perfect sunscreen. Uh, they only cover a very small portion of the solar radiation. And they found that titanium dioxide and zinc oxide cover UVB and UVA. The problem is that there are those white, opaque lifeguard noses that the public doesn't like. So they nanosized them down to nanometer size. 
and the FDA approved them at that, thinking, well, the titanium dioxide and zinc oxide in bulk form is not toxic, so therefore you can go ahead and use them. And there was no requirement for labeling whether you were getting a nanosized in that tube or not. Uh, the nanosize means less than 100 nanometers in size. So what's happening with these nanoparticles? Uh, here's pictures of the reactive oxygen species that are being formed in the skin. In photo A, it's showing just normal reactive oxygen species that are occurring all the time. And then photo B, the fluorescence is the reactive oxygen species. And in B is just a very small dose of the titanium dioxide. And then as the increase in dose moves up, there's more and more reactive oxygen species being formed in the skin. And this, these concentrations are very much lower than what you would get from a normal tube of sunscreen. Um, like I said, those reactive oxygen species are very normal levels, but we've been told that the sunscreens reduce cancer and reduce photoaging. And in reality, these ROS that are being formed in our skin uh, actually cause cancer because they cause uh, DNA damage and they actually cause photoaging. So not only are we not getting protected, we are increasing our risk of cancer and we are risk increasing, oh my gosh. Okay, I got lots of pictures to show you. Okay, pictures worth a thousand words, right? Um, anyway, the, they are very toxic. These are some of the, the chemicals that are being sold today as sunscreens. There's many, many of them because not one of them works for the best. But this picture itself, this is showing the, the chemicals that act as estrogens, anti-estrogens, as androgens, as well as anti-androgens. Actually, all the increased hash marks are the more important ones. And in fact, the benzophenones and salicylates are more anti-androgenic than flutamide, the cancer uh, drug for um, prostate cancer patients. What's the impact on mammals? Uh, they're showing great hormone toxicity, not only general, but also reproductively. The reproductive tract with the male animals are definitely impacted, more so than the females because of the estrogenicity and the anti-testosterone. Um, they're in our lakes and waters, they are in our rivers, they are all over the place, uh, and they are not taken out by waste treatment plants. And so they're not only in the water, they're now absorbed by the fish, uh, this is the concentration of the amount in the fish. So we're not only putting them on our skin, we're eating them in the fish we eat. These are the uh, sunscreen chemicals that were in those lake and river studies. So uh, the intersex fish are telling us how uh, toxic these are. They're actually, the, the fish they're seeing exposed just to sunscreen are actually creating testicle sacs with eggs developing in them. and egg departments with testicle material growing in them. And uh, this is the vitellogenin that they produce. The black bar is our estradiol. So they're producing as much a stronger reaction as our strongest human estrogen. Uh, they're in 97% of the bloodstream of Americans today, even those who say they don't use it. And uh, it's uh, absorbs very readily. It's a picked up, detected in five minutes, goes through all the organs in the body. And children are more susceptible. The BP3 that has been in those previous studies is now in everything. It's now all these sunscreen chemicals are found in household dust, we're, so we're breathing them also. And they're now found in mother's milk, and so our babies are drinking them. Uh, they're causing disruption for the sexually dimorphic brain development. And so they're seeing animals that don't know whether they're boys or girls. If this is happening in animals, then it's got to be happening to our human fetuses too. Uh, the testicular, it, it causes male reproductive tract uh, disruption. So testicular cancer's on the rise that came from being in utero. Uh, male infertility's on the rise that came from being in utero. Um, it, incre it increases breast cell cancer lines and causes a division, so we're also increasing our risk of breast cancer. Uh, it disrupts the thyroid uh, development in utero, so we're having a bunch of kids with thyroid disruption problems. 
um, it's one five thousandths, these titanium dioxide, one five thousandths, the diameter of human hair. And they're saying that the reason that the testing hasn't picked up toxicity, it's almost impossible to design studies that pick up at that rate and for the difference in how they react because they're so tiny. Uh, this is titanium dioxide. They're so tiny, they go through the cell membrane. Uh, the arrows point to the deposits in the cell. And then also they go through the nuclear membrane where they cause DNA disruption and disrupted cell division. Uh, this is a schematic of how it causes cell death. And um, there, it also crosses the blood-brain barrier. So they found it in the brain. Uh, they're finding that it's causing pathological lesions in the organs that they're deposited in because there's no way for the body to eliminate these. Um, Dr. Shastol, who did a lot of the work with mice, uh, finding large DNA deletions in the offspring of the mice, uh, has just been warning, 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 saying we really need to look at the use of this because they're in everything now, including pudding, pudding from health food stores because they're protecting the color. So you, you've got to read every label. Um, and it also causes DNA def uh, vitamin D deficiency because uh, we, it prevents us from forming vitamin D in our skin, and that's becoming a worldwide pandemic problem. And uh, the, uh, the estimated cost of vitamin D deficiency uh, just in 2004, they say it's somewhere between 40 and $56 billion. So we need to stop preventing the vitamin D formation. Uh, antioxidants are the answer. Antioxidants work just the same as <laughs> thank you, just the same as the sunscreens. They actually move up in the skin when the skin is exposed to solar rays and form a protective shield. Lots of antioxidants in my book. I have a whole chapter of the proven studies of the antioxidants that protect against solar rays. Uh, these are uh, the antioxidants that are listed, and then there's natural program. Uh, the Australian did a SunSmart program, TV advertising, blitzing, saying cover your children, hats, long sleeves, and they've actually reduced the rate of melanoma in Australia. So natural protection is better. Okay, so it's just imperative we stop using these things and get them out of the environment. And so, okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we uh, Gary? I can't thank you enough for the work you've done because that is the most common cancer in the world. And it is all due to nonsense. <laughs> the sun is absolutely not the guilty party. In fact, the top people in vitamin D are telling us today that only the sun does all the things that vitamin D is hopefully trying to do because when you're in the sun, you're getting metabolites. So if we look at the benefit risk ratio, we need to stop this whole nonsense. I come from Madison, Wisconsin. My neighbor was Dr. Mo. We proved we could cure 100% of all skin cancers. I have them all the time, and I love the sun, but I love you for the work you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Very much.